Like you can give me some humble shit answer to make you not sound arrogant because you're virtue signaling and you don't want to seem like an asshole, but in your heart of hearts, you know it's going to help him, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, so let's like let's be authentic with ourselves. Number one, this is what this is the arrogance you've seen me. Look, you can take my advice or not take my advice. Sometimes it will work, sometimes it won't. But like, I know for a fact, if you stop cheating on your partner, your life will get better. I know for a fact, if you stop being toxic, your life will get better. Okay, you don't have to believe me. You can keep doing you. This video is the Ice Coffee Hour with Dr. K. It's just a segment, but I think we should watch it before we watch the boogie video because I think it's a good. It's a helping tool when we're having a conversation about helping others. What does it mean to help others? Like you guys know on this channel, I always say I only help those who can help themselves because I radically, radically accept your journey as it is. And it's only my job to come into your life as a part of the journey, whether I help or not, that's not up to me. That's up to you, right? Because I can give you as many tools that would help somebody else, but it might not help you. I can be actually a hindrance to your journey. I could be the bad guy in your journey, but it's really up to you to decide, am I gonna help or am I gonna hurt you? Because I can't make that decision for you. I can only be myself and I can only, you know, give the world the tools that I have. But my version of helping is much more like accepting people are on a journey now. I have a great desire to problem solve, but for my own ego because I like to problem solve. And it's less about saving the world as it used to be for me. It's more about problem solving. And again, it's not about me. Even if I help you along your journey, don't give me the credit. Take it for yourself. You're the one who used me to get better. I'm just a tool, bro. You, do you thank the hammer for helping you or do you thank yourself for grabbing the hammer? I'm just a hammer, my bros. But you are the arbiter of that hammer. You are the arbiter of your choices of your life. So with that said, let's check out this video between um, Graham, Stefan, Jack, and Dr. K. And this segment is about helping. So oh, I, I love talking about myself. I have these okay. theories. I love talking about oh, myself. So I've known Graham now. Don't know how many years. Four and a half years. Four and a half years. Okay. okay. So fairly well, because I've lived- five. It'll be five in March. Because I've lived yeah. with him as well. I've lived with him for eight months here and like, no, eight months in LA and then what, about a year here. So quite some time, right? We're business partners, best friends, so many things, right? I notice this kind of like lower vibration undertone of stress, impatience, negativity, like more neurotic thinking, et cetera, a lot in him. I'd say and very I, little negative thinking. And I absolutely, and I absolutely, I have the, the speaking <laughs> Starbucks cup right now, okay? And I- By the way, I'm in such a bubble that I was like, I can't believe they bought Starbucks. And I'm like, oh my God, look at me being in such a bubble as if like other people aren't gonna buy Starbucks. But I was kind of like, when they saw that, I was like, oh. And then I was like, oh wait, they probably don't even know what that means. Love him for it right? Like I, I enjoy spending time with him and everything, but I notice these things. And as his friend, I like to provide suggestions on how I think he can improve his life. That's just what I like to do, right? You want to know what you can do to improve his life? Don't talk about the, look at his face. Don't talk right. about the negative things about him in public. That's number one. But keep he, going. He, oh, he doesn't really. No, I wouldn't okay. say. Yeah. Okay. I just want to comment on this point. So this is me being like an observer. So Dr. K notices an a uncomfortable reaction out of Graham. And he tries to correct Jack, but in like a very, and I don't mean to toot my own horn, but very like Britney-esque way. I was like, oh, Dr. K kind of harsh in this podcast, which I kind of like, cause I'm so harsh as a person, but they reject it. They reject the criticism. Graham comes to Jack's defense right away, which is interesting because even though Dr. K was right with his observation, his harshness made Graham want to protect Jack and Jack wanted to be like, no, that's okay. We do this all the time. And I just think their dynamics are really interesting and lovely. And again, I love the iced coffee hour. I love Graham Stefan. I love, Jack. I love everything. I love Dr. K. I love everybody on this screen, but I love like watching people be people, no matter who we are, no matter if it's me or you or Dr. K, look at the way we receive information, right? I speak about Graham extremely yeah. highly. And when I'm saying I notice these like lower vibration things such as stress and stuff like that, this is me trying to be productive, not just saying this for yeah. viewers or no, anything. I would agree I'm, with him on the stress. The negativity. Okay. Graham, is more, this is, you know. You have the Starbucks cup. Okay, go ahead. the Starbucks Okay, Jeff. my bad. <laughs> so anyways, and I try to provide suggestions to him that I think would make him better off. Is that like, he really seems happy when he's working, but I'm nervous that a lot of the work is about the ends. It's about 
it's it, and he says he attains like this flow state yes which which i i agree i can totally understand that but part of me is concerned that he continually places his value and worth and stuff on the ends rather than enjoying the process and so i want to know maybe for mm -hmm. graham uh what would you say to somebody like graham that thinks maybe something will continually make them happy but they continually find themselves in this lower vibrational state. I would never say something to a person like that. Why? I would ask them questions. So I, I think like there's like the fundamentals are different here. So like you think he needs help, right? Mm -hmm. And you've diagnosed some problem because mm -hmm. you know him really well, right? So you preface this with, I've known you so, so long. You, so you, you started out by stacking the deck of like, Here's all the evidence for why my opinion is correct. Right? And then you Do you think in that moment Jack was like appealing to authority because that's what it felt like, right? He was like, I'm right, right? And I don't blame him because I do this all the time. So relatable. But also you're like, am I right or wrong? You're also asking for yourself. If I assess the situation correctly and then you refer to somebody with authority to say like, are you seeing what I'm seeing or to somebody in general? You said this is what I've observed. It's clear to me that you love the guy and that you want to help him and your heart is in the right place. But if you kind of pay attention, how did he respond to what you said? He combated it. Absolutely. Right. Some so, of it I agreed with. The stress I agree with. Sure. So but, you're yeah. self-aware and stuff like that, but yeah. affectively, like emotionally, like he did not like that, bro. Like y'all can go back and watch the tape, but just like watch. There's like a lot of no. good. How did you feel I think, about it? I'm indifferent about it. I, I think there's a, a healthy amount of like. See, he says he's indifferent to it, but obviously not indifferent, right? And Dr. K knows that. Back and forth. The Jack you and I me. I, I oh, totally, yeah. I totally, like I was giving Jack totally, crap for his haircut. Not, so it's I'm like not, this back and forth. I totally agree that there's a lot of health here. I'm yeah. not trying to create a mountain out of a molehill, but I saw something called micro expressions. Is, and I, I, I'm just please, no, like, dive yeah, into it. I love this. Sure, so this. I, I, yeah. I got some degree of discomfort from him the moment you brought it up, like mm -hmm. when you were saying like all this kind of stuff and I'm not surprised that he pushed back on some of it but so you want to help someone right mm -hmm. what do you know about them just what you've observed I mean this is really important because when we talk about helping people like sometimes people will re reach out to me and say can you help my friend and I'm like you know I think it would do better if I helped you recontextualize your desire to help your friend and they're like no I don't need help my friend needs help and I'm like hmm, hmm is it your friend that needs the help uh, clearly, I mean, a very small portion of all of the the things in their life, the determinism, right, in his life that has led to him making certain judgment calls. And then all I observe is this, like I said, a lot of times stress and like lower okay. vibrational things. And from there, I try to understand where is that coming from? Okay. So Jack, so let me ask you, how many things have you said to Graham to try to help him with this? <laughs> I mean, I would say I've brought it up over the course of a few years, mm -hmm. several times. Right. And Try what to... effect has it had? So far, none, but you're a professional. So yeah. I'd like your so, opinion on it. So what I'd say- See, he like appealed to authority, right? And I would pay attention to, to how this impacts, like, again, I try, it's, it's, it's why people do the punishment method of helping. And I think that's appropriate when it has to do with you. I didn't punish Sneeko. By denying him access to me, Sneeko can still message me if he wants to. I'm still rooting for Sneeko, right? I'm still guesstimating in his 30s. He'll be a much more interesting person, and I'm excited for that, right? So I'm still team Sneeko, but I don't condone Sneeko's actions. I condone his journey in terms of him living his life because, like, that's his story, right? It's not my job to condone it. I'm not Jesus, right? I'm just a person, right? So, again, you can – like, I can't help Sneeko any more than – he can help himself. I can't reach out to Sneeko and be like, Sneeko, please don't make this video. It's making you a misogynist. Like what? That's not going to help him. But what I can do is help myself by taking down the podcast we did together because I don't like the way Sneeko treats women, right? I mean, women in his personal life. I don't like the way he treats them. It's not even the women on the internet because sometimes it's just a grift, but the women in his personal life, I don't like the way he treats them. So I took down the collab we had done together because it's uh, it's at a level that I don't really condone, right? Now, and in, 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 that, in that video, I wasn't really um, like arguing with him. I was more or less allowing him to speak. So that's why that particular video got taken down and not the other ones. Because in the other ones, I like am combative with him. My way of helping is to help myself. I don't help Sneeko. I help myself. 
I help myself by putting down boundaries and saying like, hey, I'm doing this for me. But if Sneeko wants to in the future come to me and say, hey, Brittany, I need one of those tools. I'd be like, here, does this one help? And then it's up to him to decide if I helped. I can't help Sneeko. I can only be a person that like gives him a tool to help himself, right? Say is that you're a smart guy, right, Jack? You know your stuff, bro. Come on. I think I'm, you've read a lot of you've read a lot of books. Oh, tons of self help. Yeah, tons of self help. Right. You're very. Ins- uh, Jack and Graham are a working team. They are not a romantic couple. They're a business team. Insightful. You're very intelligent. You all have a podcast where like literally the best and brightest minds, present company accepted, come to your podcast and share with you the wisdom of the, just the crazy successes they had and how mm-hmm. they built their life. You are very equipped. You say you're not a professional. You may not be a trained psychotherapist, but you know a lot, right? I would say I have a good understanding. Okay. And despite you knowing so much and reading so much and learning so much and knowing this guy so well, everything you've said hasn't helped. Mm-hmm. Stop saying. And Start you think- asking, right? I agree with that. I agree with that. I like Jack because he's like such a golden retriever and it's like so sweet. And Graham is like a, a like an old beagle. <laughs> and I love them both together so much. But Jack is so, he's 25. He's just figuring it out. He He's right though. You want to ask questions. You want to get to know people. And the question I, and the, the thing I want to pose to you, because I think there's a misconception about content creators and like what you're doing on the internet. Like I'm not helping people 24 seven. I'm solving problems. That's what I'm doing. And if it helps you, cool. But like, I don't want to help people. I want to solve problems, which is because I'm solving problems, I will help people. But do you see how the intentionality is like specifically different? But to moralize it, to make yourself sound better, you go, I'm helping people. We're entertaining ourselves. We're problem solving. Yes, some people have a focus of helping. But again, I don't want to focus my life on helping because I don't want to be in this situation where instead of helping you're just like contributing and making it more difficult and plus you kind of take away your agency as a person to just have an opinion because if i'm always in a position where i have to help people then when am i allowed to talk shit and i want to talk shit bruh i want to say like your relationships suck and i want to say like i disagree with this and i want to be very harsh but usually when people imagine like a perfect helping person they imagine someone who's 24 7 a guru who's ready to hear your problems and help you it's this fantasy Everyone infantilizes and creates a fantasy around their own needs, right? It's like one of the most dangerous parts of, I think, being a person who helps people. It's why I don't believe in altruism, right? I just believe in the desire to like problem solve or do what you think is right by your values. But again, like what does it mean to help people, right? Fully, 100,000%, without a doubt, yes. I think people imposing their own beliefs on what will improve someone's life, as I alluded to earlier, is just overall a negative thing rather than understanding and them understanding for themselves. So it's not about what you're saying is right or wrong. So here's the crazy thing. Every single thing that you've told him is going to help, right? Well, it potentially could if applied, but who knows, right? Ah, no. So so potentially could if applied. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to say my statement again. You tell me if you agree or disagree. Yeah. Everything you told him is going to help if applied. Mm -hmm. So everything you told him is going to help. Why isn't it being applied? Because he doesn't want to. Okay. How do we get him to change his mind? He probably has to find out for himself. How do we help him find out for himself? Asking questions. There we go. And look at what we just did with you. What do we do with me? (laughs) Did you pay attention? (laughs) He's such a puppy. Oh, he's so cute. I just, I'm not to infantilize Jack, but like Dr. K just ran through the whole, the whole thing with him. And then Dr. K goes, look, we just did it with you. And he's like, what did we do? And I'm like, oh, Look at his sweet smile. I love, I just, oh, he he feels like a little, like a, I'm so infantilizing him right now. This is what I mean. You think I could be with a 25 year old? They're so sweet. They're babies. They're little babies. Like what? This is so cute. Like, what did we do? It's just like, okay, so sweet. Uh, You changed his. You asked me questions. Yes. There you okay. go. And okay. now you get it. Right. See? Okay. So this is something my entire life. I have done this, where if I see an issue with someone else, else using the term better off, just as a broad stroke, I try to understand where they're coming from and I see some place where they're suffering in their life and I try to assist them and make them better. Relatable, Brittany all through her teens and 20s, but also people would come to me. I bet Jack, 
has a lot of people who talk to him. I bet he's warm and welcoming and people want to tell him things because relatable. We're like, people just want to tell you things and then you want to problem solve it because it's exciting and you want to help. I bet Jack is probably more interested in the problem solving aspect than the helping one. But I think people forget like help is a byproduct of tools being utilized, right? Help is a byproduct of it being the correct answer, which is what Dr. K is trying to sell, say to him. Which is why when you have parents who have multiple kids, like in my family, some of my parents' methods worked perfectly well for their kids. And some of them worked horribly for their kids because their way of helping was one dimensional. They couldn't, they had a hard time helping people as individuals, you know? They had like a one size fits all policy. Better off. I have done this my entire life. I try to fix people, right? And so I see these things in Graham and I wonder why people don't listen to my advice because I've per continued to give advice for my 25 years of existence <laughs> to people and they don't apply it, right? And they are not better off from my advice. So I would mm. say in the past year- That's good self-awareness right there. Maybe two. I've kind of recognized the fact that they do need to find out for themselves, right? And there is merit in suffering and, and, um, and I would say letting someone suffer or letting yeah. someone, but, but <clears throat> at, what point, at what point do you step in and say something? <laughs> I know it's a super okay. no, no no Jack so so here's like once again I think you're so you're brilliant okay so let's just like I'm about to say something that I think could come across as harsh but I think you're ready for it so Please. let me just yeah, yeah. let me just cuddle you for a bit mm -hmm. a bit okay so like you care a lot about other people mm -hmm. right and you read a lot and you learn a lot you've applied it to your own life you know how to help other people you know 100% that it's going to help him like you know that like you can give me some humble shit answer to make you not sound arrogant because you're virtue signaling and you don't want to seem like an asshole, but in your heart of hearts, you know it's going to help him, right? Yes. Okay, so let's like let's be authentic with ourselves. Number one, this is what this is the arrogance you've seen me. Look, you can take my advice or not take my advice. Sometimes it will work, sometimes it won't. But like, I know for a fact if you stop cheating on your partner, your life will get better. I know for a fact if you stop being toxic, your life will get better. Okay, you don't have to believe me. You can keep doing you. But this is a great video to watch as we move into the boogie video today because I just know, I just know he's going to double down on the toxicity. Okay. Okay. So now the question, I think the reason, the problem that you're running into is like, so you want to help people. Yes. Right? And that drive to help people causes you to help people. And then you want to like make the world a better place and love and stuff like that. Where you The road to hell is paved in good intentions. You need to start. Sure, you can learn techniques. I've just told you, okay, you can ask questions mm -hmm. instead of say things. And so now like Jack is like, yeah, now I'm going to like ask everybody questions yes. and then I will help them right. and I will make the world a better place because these are the people that I love and I'm going to help them. Have you ever asked yourself why you want to help all these people? Why? I, because it, it's, it, it satisfies my selfish desire of being happy, I would say. Do you know that? I like... I like it when somebody makes a difference. I tell someone to open up a high yield savings account. I just did this with a close family friend or not a family friend, a hometown friend. He did it. And then I texted him I'm like, hey, did your interest come in? And he's like, yeah, I just made X amount of money off of X amount of money. This is amazing. I'm like, yes, like this is awesome. You know okay. what I mean? So or I see someone that. I feel that too, but it's because like, again, it doesn't like, I'm not mother Teresa. I'm not a saint. I'm not trying to get you to Jesus kids. I'm just like excited that we problem solve something. So I just get a dopamine hit from problem solving. That's what I think it is. Like if I ask myself, why do I do it? I just love the idea of problem solving. And then I'm like, cool. Okay, next problem. Which is why I also don't like, I don't, um, I don't spend a lot of time on the problem solving I've done. Like it doesn't matter to me because like there's a new problem I can't solve. So you know what I mean? So my brain is like not interested in what I've done in the past. Now I want to know what I've done now or what I'm working on now. And again, that is because of my selfish desire to like fuel my curiosity and to feed it. And that comes from problem solving. You know what I mean? <clears throat> so that's now, overweight and I want to help them lose weight. If, if you, you really want to fix this issue. Yes. The key thing that you have to understand is it's being driven by this. It's not actually about the other person. It's, exactly. I mean, it is about the other person. There's genuine love in there. It is satisfying my own but, selfish desire. Yes. Right. So, so then, and it's, I, I even think the way the word selfish desire, I think is a uh, mental. That's why I always think it's a red, like a red flag when I see people say, um, like, again, I'm open with boundaries. I love my family and friends. I love uh, like helping them, but I will not sacrifice myself because they won't take the tools. Right? Like I won't, 
I won't sacrifice my joy for the sake of somebody else who won't utilize tools. That's why I say I'm not going to help you unless you can help yourself, right? Marco says, but Britt, do you think you should problem solve a problem of someone that denies help and does not see the problem at issue? No, I don't. If they are not going to help themselves, if they're not going to seek me out, I'm not going to seek them out. I do not seek people out. I do not message Sneeko. I do not message people that I think are suffering. If they reach out to me, I'm happy to help, right? Like, do you understand that I do not, I'm not here to save you. I'm here to give you a tool if you need it. This idea that like I'm just sitting here messaging people to try to help them, I'm not 25 anymore. <clears throat> I'm not in my 20s trying to save the world from their problems anymore. I learned that lesson. I, I agree with Dr. K. Like I learned that lesson on my own meditation journey of you have to let people go through their journey, myself included, right? Now, it's nice when you know where people stand. It's nice if people reach out to me. They're like, can you tell me again what you think of this? I had a friend. Okay, my homie told me I can tell you this story. My homie calls me and goes, I'm having unprotected sex. And I'm like, okay, why? And they're like, because I'm horny and I just gave into my like horniness. And I was like, okay. I was like, well, don't do that again. And they're like, well, I might have done it a few times. And I'm like, okay, don't do that again. And they're like, yes, but I also maybe had unprotected sex and wrist an STI. And I was like, okay. So like the layers get more intense. And of course, it's my homie. It's it's my my friend. Of course, my brain is like, holy shit, my friend is being reckless. My friend is also an adult and they're capable and they're grown. And if they two consenting, consenting adults are willing to risk spreading STIs amongst each other and they are getting tested and they are like self-aware and there is like, you know, they're allowed to do that. Is it something I recommend doing? No, especially if there's a permanent STI that's sort of at risk here. No, but am I going to sit there and freak out and lose sleep over it? Not anymore, kids. In the past, absolutely. Brittany would have lost so much sleep over this. Not anymore. I love you. Have fun, you dirty slut. Please use condoms. And if you can, just stop doing it all together because this is not your forever person and you know it. It's just a lover and it's not worth it. But OK, you do you. Right. And again, I think what's beautiful about that friendship is one, they're willing to call me and say, hey, I know I'm doing something dumb. I just need you like in the back of my head to remind me that it's dumb, even though I'm probably going to keep doing it. I'm like, OK, it's dumb. And I love you anyways, even if you keep doing it. Because at the end of the day, like you're allowed to risk your body. You're allowed to engage in toxic behavior. I don't recommend it. I don't think it's going to facilitate your joy. But if you don't want to be disciplined and you want to get your rocks off, you do you. Right? And they're not spreading it to anyone unconsensual. Everything is consensual. Everybody knows what's happening. It's not like there's going to be a surprise. Right? No one's going to be surprised if they contract the STI. So again, I think when you learn that, you do both of yourself a service. You give yourself the allowance to sleep at night because it's not your problem. And then you give them the knowledge that you love them regardless of their decisions and you trust them enough to go on their journey. But also they trust you enough to hear criticism and to actually like understand where it's coming from. And I think that's really, really important in a symbiotic relationship with people. Again, I don't help people who can't help people. Mental construction. I don't, I don't think help people who can't help themselves. Sorry. That's in a sense what it is. I think you've observed something within yourself and then you've like read a bunch of books and you've said, this is what's going on. That's not, I mean, that's a piece of what's going on. Mm -hmm. So I think if you really want to get good at this, you have to really dig into where does this desire, mm -hmm. because it's like, sure, it makes your ego feel good, mm -hmm. but it's like deeper than that. Right? Probably. Yeah. Right? I like think this is like, it's a part of who you are. I would say so. Yeah. Right. It's not uh, so satisfying your selfish desires on the narcissism and ego spectrum. This mm. isn't narcissism. This yeah, is, this is, you know what this is? This is debt, bro. This is interesting. So this is where he starts talking about karma and past life and genetics, which is where him and I deviate. So this is where Dr. and Kay and I actually deviate because I don't really believe in past life karma. I don't believe in a past life. Um, it's fine. He mentions a lot of studies and data and possibilities. I do believe in like genetic trauma and things that get like pushed, you know, from your parent to your child and all that stuff. But this is the part of the conversation that I actually disagree with. Obviously, I'm coming from a more Western philosophy and he's using Eastern philosophy and I totally vibe with the Eastern philosophy. But obviously, I would say it's rooted in sort of a 
ego or a curiosity or a desire. And he would say it's in relation to like a debt you feel, maybe because of a uh, past life or something you're giving back. Now, that's this is not the part of the video we need to keep watching. But if you guys do want to check it out, of course, I'll link it. I'm almost done with it on my own personal time. And it's been a great conversation to watch. Uh, lots of good bubbles and ideas in this video, so I do recommend it. But what I wanted to talk about was sort of the desire to help and why we do it. So again, I think a lot of people mistake people who help as sort of saviors, and I think people fall into that their, their own shtick in relation to it. Like even Dr. Jordan Peterson sometimes gives me that vibe where he almost believes he's like saving people, which is why I think I don't trust him. Because I think it is dangerously narcissistic to think you're saving people. You know what I mean? And I think people sometimes have to put themselves on a pedestal to sort of justify why they would even help people in the first place. But I'm not, I don't need to do that. Like I don't need to put myself on a pedestal to sort of be good to my neighbors. Like I don't need to put myself on a pedestal to offer like assistance. But it also doesn't do, like it doesn't drain me necessarily. Like if I'm at the store and someone drops something, it doesn't drain me to pick it up and give it to them, right? If somebody like, I don't know, like you ever see somebody like drop something and it breaks and you just help them clean it up. Like it doesn't, everyone's like, oh my gosh, you're so sweet. I can't believe you did this. It, what do you mean? You're acting like I fucking saved your kid, bro. And even if I did save your kid, it's not that big of a deal. Like it's not, I don't need to put myself on a pedestal to fucking save your kid from dying. It's just like, yeah, that's what you should do, I guess. Cause like it's, I'm here and I can help people have this relationship with like, I'm going to be a hero. I'm going to save this person's life. And I'm like, yeah, yeah. I'm just like happy to problem solve this fucking thing. I'm glad it saved your life. Next problem, you know, it's very much about like, it's a very much about me. It's very much like I'm so happy that was the result, but I don't need to make myself a hero in order to do good things. And I think people who do don't know why they're doing it in the first place, which is why this conversation is so good. Now, in conjunction with this conversation, we are going to go into Caleb Hammer and Boogie2988 because Caleb Hammer is going to rever re um, review his finances. And I apparently have been told that Boogie is quite self-destructive. So when we watch this, let's think about how Caleb's trying to help. Let's think about how we would help somebody like Boogie if they were in our life. And let's decide if we're falling into a trap of one of three things. We are upset with Boogie because he won't listen to us. We're upset with ourselves because we won't, we won't radically accept that this is Boogie's choices and this is his life. And when I say radically accepted, I mean without bitterness or resentment. This is important, right? Um, What is it? Wait, what are my three things? I'm spacing now. We want to make sure that we're not, oh, and then that we don't understand, right? So it's like a mystery. Do we not understand Boogie? Do we, is it uh, like, what, am I frustrated because I don't even understand him? Let's get to the point where we understand him, radically accept him and let it go, right? And we probably will be very critical and I'm probably going to say things that are going to hurt someone's feelings. Honestly, I get it. Think of it as a tool. Why does this thing Brittany say, says, why does it hurt my feelings? That is a tool. When you feel yourself getting offended, it is a tool, not an opportunity to be self-righteous, but an opportunity to say, why does this thing Brittany says hurt my, hurts my feelings? Like, why are my feelings hurt? And then you'll you'll discover answers that you probably didn't even realize were there. In my head. My belly's being fed and I'm okay I'm just fine, yet all I do is whine Not to you in my mind, cause I know I don't make sense I've been nothing but blessed So why's my life a mess? Please tell me, cause I'm sick of thinking Yeah, I'm sick of reaching out for the truth Life is a fool. 